Okay, uh, we are now going to talk about malware. Uh, this includes things like viruses, worms, Trojan horses, viruses. So what is a computer virus? The definition is a virus is software that, when run, it copies itself into the code of other programs or files. So just like a biological virus, it spreads kind of on its own like when it is when it is executed it will copy itself to other programs or other files in such a way that when those files are opened or those programs are run then the virus code runs which will copy itself and it may do more malicious things uh, but we'll talk about that in a bit so how do computers get viruses? Well, there are a bunch of different ways. Uh, it usually requires some kind of high-level access to the system. So basically what will happen is it will attach itself to, like, say, an email, or um, they can be disguised as PDF files or Word documents or something. And then when you open this, when you double-click on it, it runs its code and copies itself somewhere on the system. These can work in a lot of different ways. With the spread of the internet, it's become more possible. So say you go to a sort of a dubious site, it will possibly pop up some window that says, hey, do you want to download this toolbar or this browser add-on? And you say yes, and then the virus code executes, and you know, you're infected. One of the reasons why Windows is typically more targeted than any other system has to do with how Windows handles permissions. Typically, the way most people's computers are set up is they run as a high-level user. So they have access to a lot of system files and areas where viruses like to hide. This is why Unix and Unix-like operating systems typically don't have problems with viruses because they typically don't allow users access to sort of vital areas. Like you can, on a Mac, uh, if you oftentimes when you go to install software, it asks you to enter your password. And Unix systems are the same way. The, usually the only thing you can modify are your own files, not the system files. I mean, you can modify the system files but you have to give explicit permission. More modern versions of Windows do something very similar, so they're becoming less targeted for viruses. The other reason why Windows is more targeted simply has to do with market share. Um, if you're someone that is interested in causing harm and doing malicious damage, you want to do as much as possible, so you want to target as many people as possible. So you're not going to hit a Unix system, you're not going to hit a Mac system, you're going to hit a Windows system because that's what most people have. So like I said, that's one of the things that has kept Unix systems safe. A fun aside, uh, many, not many, a few years ago, some people tried to write a virus for Unix systems called Bliss, and they released it into the wild. It didn't do anything. It just said, you have been affected by a virus and left it at that. Um, it never really propagated it because it required the user to specifically run it. There is no way it could execute itself. It's just the way the system was designed. So how do you stay safe from viruses? Um, don't open untrusted email attachments. If you get an email from someone claiming to be a Nigerian prince and there's an attachment that it wants you to open, don't do it. Um, only download software from reputable sources. You know, make sure you know what the site is before you download something and run it. Uh, download, update, and use antivirus software. That's that's by far the most important thing you can do. Uh, Microsoft, I believe, offers a malware suite that's pretty good. Um, AVG antivirus is another good one, and I have a chart that shows these here. We'll see that in a minute. Always, always keep your antivirus software up to date. Viruses change over time, and it is incumbent upon you to keep your protection up to date. If you don't update your antivirus software, it doesn't know what to look for. You can also use a Mac or a Linux system. These are generally virus-free. Uh, there are a few viruses out there that target Macs, but uh, they have the same kind of security that Linux and Unix systems have, so they are pretty safe. Also, just a note, unfortunately it is virus, not viri or viri, and this keeps auto-correcting to vidi. It's supposed to be viri like this, but I didn't get around to changing the slide. Um, which is too bad, because honestly I like viri better than virus, but viruses, but you know, we do what we can. So here's that chart I was talking about that has some free antivirus software. This came from, this came from PC Magazine. Uh, AVG was the one I used to use when I used a Windows system. 
it worked pretty well and it was pretty unobtrusive and it was pretty light it didn't uh, take up a lot of resources you can see they also have Microsoft's on here it works pretty well from what I understand I think it's getting better these are different places that have rated the um, antivirus software I'm not entirely sure what all their ratings mean I do know that AVG works pretty well the one for Microsoft works pretty well I'm not super familiar with the rest of these uh, one of my old jobs used to use Sophos and it was a okay um, I didn't really like the way it updated but you know uh, whatever works worms now worms are distinct from viruses a lot of times on TV and movies and stuff they use these terms interchangeably but they're different a worm is a piece of software that copies itself across networks and or drives so that's different from a virus which it copies itself into the code of other programs or files typically if a piece of malware will copy itself across drives like say you have a C drive and a D drive and it'll copy it from one to the other that's a worm if it copies itself into your sys.32 or sys32 file that's a virus now you can have two, both of them there's the famous line for the movies hackers where the where serial killer says a worm and a virus yeah well that's not that uncommon maybe it was in the 80s but it's not now um, typically you'll have a piece of code that hides itself in another piece of software it gets executed and it'll copy itself across drives worms um, Worms aren't necessarily malicious. There's a few, they call them helper worms that roam around on the internet. I still don't want some unknown software installing itself on my system. They are frequently a transmission vector for other issues. So like a worm will carry with it a virus. They also may use and typically do use so-called helper programs. What that means is the worm will say fire up your email client and email everybody in your contacts list. Um, this was made famous by the I love you worm in 2005. Uh, any of you who are using the internet then most likely got an email one day that said I love you in the subject bar and contained this virus. I remember I was working for an internet service provider at the time and I got the email and I went I don't know who this is from and deleted it. About half my coworkers ran it and we got a notification from management saying if you get this or have got this let us know and expect a lot of calls and we got a lot of calls. So how to stay safe from worms. Don't open untrusted email attachments. Um, only download software from reputable sources, install, update, and use antivirus, anti-malware software, and use a Unix-based system. These are the best ways to stay safe from worms. So now, Trojan horses. Uh, so what is a Trojan horse? As you can probably guess just from the name, a Trojan horse is a piece of software that claims to do one thing, but in actuality does something else, usually something malicious. These are commonly things like... Um, browser toolbars uh, there used to be ones I, I believe bonsai buddy was a trojan horse it might have just been you know garbage wear anyway they're becoming more common uh, a lot of stats show that these are are becoming sort of the way to infect people's computers often they install as toolbars or other types of add-ons um, pc optimizer pro is a well-known trojan horse and they are often used to create botnets which we'll talk about more in a minute anytime you go to a website and it has the flashing ad that says you know your computer's at risk download this now that's usually going to be a trojan one of the uh, more fun experiences i've had since i've been using a mac is seeing those that pop up that say your windows blah blah file has been corrupted download this to fix it like really not on a Windows system, how can that be? How to stay safe from Trojan horses. If a website has an ad that says you may have already won and flashes, don't click on it. Um, just most of the ads you see on the internet, um, you know, for discount pharmaceuticals or anything, it's, it's just, if you click on it, you're gonna have a bad time. Um, don't open untrusted email attachments. And install, update, and use antivirus and anti-malware software. That's the best thing you can do. Or, you know, use a Unix-based system like a Mac or Ubuntu. Rootkits. What in the world is a rootkit? A rootkit is a stealthy piece of software designed to hide functionality from the user, typically by giving access to administrator level access to an external entity. That's really poorly written. Uh, I maybe need to fix this slide. So essentially what this means is a rootkit, a rootkit hides certain functionality from you, the user. 
So originally it was a way to gain access to a Unix-like system because essentially it installed tools that looked exactly like existing system tools but performed differently. So uh, instead of reporting, say, certain ports were open or whatever, it would say they were closed and it would allow someone from outside, usually a hacker or sometimes in a business, to gain access to your computer. Famously, Sony in 2005 used a rootkit on some CDs as a form of anti-piracy. It basically wouldn't let you do certain things with your computer. They got sued pretty heavily over that. Uh, typically, what it does is it allows a third party to access privileged settings on your computer. So things to do with your system file or network settings, it allows someone to access those and kind of hides itself and modifies the output from programs so you don't know it's there. They're, they're pretty dangerous. So how to stay safe from rootkits. Don't open untrusted email attachments. Only download software from reputable sources. Install, update, and use antivirus or anti-malware software. I say use a Unix-based system, but they're also vulnerable. Less so just because of the way they're set up. I mean, they're typically safer just because of what it takes to run software on them. So malware, what is malware? Malware is short for malicious software. It is software used to disrupt computer operation, gather sensitive information, or gain access to private computer systems. So that means it encompasses rootkits, Trojan horses, worms, and viruses. These are all a type of malware. So everything we've covered is malware. Uh, they steal information. These are, it's used to steal identity and indirectly steal money and processing power. What do I mean by that? Well, botnets. Remember I mentioned these? So botnet is a collection of compromised computers. Say a whole bunch of people got infected with a Trojan horse that allowed someone else to control their computer. Well, that person could then use software that will essentially use the computing power of all of those computers to launch a distributed denial of service attack. Remember, we talked about those earlier in the semester. It's basically a whole bunch of computers sending ping requests to a server that basically floods its capacity to respond. You can also use them for other parallel computing tasks. Uh, this is how, a lot of times, how passwords are cracked. You essentially have um, a file that needs to be decrypted, and you use a botnet to, to process that. It's, it's kind of dangerous, kind of scary, because a lot of times a computer could be hijacked and you may never know. So in summary, don't open untrusted email attachments. Only download software from reputable sources. Install, update, and use antivirus and anti-malware software or use a Unix-based system. These are really the best things you can do to stay safe from malware. Also, be aware of what's going on. Like, you know, if you get an email from someone you've never heard of before and it has an email attachment on it, think long and hard about opening it and honestly, don't do it. It's, it's not really worth it. If you get an email that says you've won a contest that you didn't enter, just delete it because no that doesn't happen. Oh, yeah, be safe, be aware.